Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We present for your enjoyment Chandu, the magician. And before our drama begins, we would like to suggest that probably you will like White King better than any other soap you have ever used. If you have a washing machine, listen. Get some White King from your grocer. Put some in your washer. Not so much, mind you, as the soap you've been using. Put in your clothes. Put in the water. But not so hot as the water you thought you had to have to get things clean. Then turn on the power, run your wash through, and just see with your own eyes what happens. We try to make this radio drama thrilling, but honestly, what a thrill you'll have when you see clothes washed with this different kind of soap. Save on your soap bill. Save on your gas bill. Save on your clothes bill. You'll say, I love White King granulated soap. Betty and Bob Regent, exploring the small pyramid, find themselves locked inside one of the ancient burial rooms of an Egyptian king. When Frank Chandler finds them, he learns they have just seen the malevolent Roxor himself, who disappeared when they approached him. Piled up on one side of the small room are the objects buried with the royal family of old Egypt. But on the sarcophagus of the king is spread an assortment of present-day chemical apparatus. A moment later, Chandler comes upon a scrap of paper with a reference to Robert Regent. Chandu, the magician. Read it yourself, Dot. That's all it says. It could be done if we could obtain the help of Robert Regent. Robert must be right here. He wasn't with Roxy or Mom, that's for sure. No, Mother, or we'd have seen him. There must be still another room in here. It cannot be so, Dorothy. We've already seen three rooms, but not yet. These rooms were always built in groups of three, Dot. Three was a mystic number to the Egyptians. Now listen. Roxor went into another room. He didn't just vanish into the air. He probably went into the outer passageway. But the point is, he'll be back. And all of you must be out of here when he comes. Well, he knows we're here. He saw me. He doesn't know Uncle Frank's here with us. And he has no idea who you are, Bob. Come along. I want you back at the hotel as soon as you can get there. I have to get the outer door of this place open. Take your candles with you. I'll need all the light I can get. What if there isn't any way to open it from the inside? There is. Whoever built the mechanism had to get out himself, you know. Better. You see, I told you when we were first locked in here. You didn't sound any too sure of it. You sounded as scared as I felt. Oh. Frank, if Rosso didn't know who Bob was... How could he, Doc? He probably thought Bob had wandered away from a party of tourists. Oh, Bob, look out! Huh? Oh, Betty, what is it? He almost bumped into that pile of chairs and things. I thought he'd knock them all down all over us. Oh, I'd be glad to be out of this place. Uncle Frank, I don't see how tourists could come in here. Neither do I. They don't. But Roxor may not know that. Anyway, he'll have to come back here to collect his chemicals and... Wait a minute. Hold your candles up. Yeah, look. Here's the way out. This lever in plain sight. Hold on, he worth it. Go ahead, Bob. Oh, this is a pretty slick deal, you know that? And look up there at the wall. You'd never know from this side it was anything but a painted design. There's no time for that now, Betty. Go outside and walk around for a few minutes as if you really were tourists. There's sure to be a crowd of camel boys and guides around with other parties. At night? Well, coming out to the Sphinx by moonlight, one of the things everyone does in Cairo, Dorothy. Go on, now. I am to stay with you, Chandu. Oh, no, you're not, Nadia. You've already put yourself in a dangerous position with Roxo. But, Chandu, I could... No. Take... You're going with the others. Oh, come back to the hotel with us, Naji. Fine. And remember, don't any of you leave it until I come back. <laughs> It's 
almost midnight. Where can he be? Not here. Oh, I couldn't wait longer at the open. Has Roxel not come? No. And you mustn't be here when he does. I'll light the candle again. Don't you realize how foolish it is for us to be seen here together? But, John, do... You told him you'd be one of his agents. When he finds you've lied to him, Nadia, why run such a risk? You are here. We are two against Roxor. Do you think I can't handle him alone? No, no. It is only that I feel great danger about you. Nadia, you must... I will not go, John, do. What am I going to do with him? You surely agree he's not to see you. If you wish, you need not. I will hide myself. But I know it is better for me to be with you. I wanted you out of this. I am in it, as you say, now, Chandu. But I will agree he should not hear us talking together. No, he can't come in without my knowing him. Didn't you hear the bell ring when you came in? The bell? Well, this one. I fastened a cord to the mechanism that opens the door. I found the bell in the burial room of the little prince. <laughs> you American. Well, I thought it would be ridiculous to sit here for hours in the dark... When the bell rings, I'll blow out the candle as I did when you came in. Now, let's see where we can hide you. Yeah. I wish you hadn't come. Oh, the tall chair. See? It is higher than my head. Yes. All right. Get behind it so I can make sure. Quickly. There he is. I'll have to blow out the candle. <laughs> he has a flashlight. Don't let him see you. Good evening, Roxor. You know me by that name? Who are you? My name is Chandler. Chandler. So, I see you at last. I have heard you are in Egypt. Oh, yes. I've had plenty of evidence that you knew I was here. And Naji has told you of my place. Now that we've met, why not tell me yourself? First, I tell you this. Men who oppose me do not live. Soon there will be none who will dare. No. You are mocking me. Well, it's, it's a little hard to believe. Tell me, how do you propose to bring this about? Already I have much power. Already all over the world there are those who await my word. And when they get it, what then? I will rule the earth. I see. In the meantime, tell me one thing. A small thing, but it interests me. How did you get into this pyramid? How did you know of these rules? <laughs> All knowledge comes to me. It was Mustafa who told you, wasn't it? You must have paid him very well. What was that sound? I don't hear anything. Look here, Roxorm. If you're so open about your great plan, why did you make it so hard for me to find you? There were many things to be done. I admit you made them necessary. Did I indeed? You have stood in my way more than once, Chandler. I have heard of you from men of many countries. <laughs> now I have seen you, I wonder if the things they told me are true. Maybe I can help you. What sort of things? You are clever to convince so many people you are a wizard, a magician. Thank you. I know it can be nothing but trickery. Yet, it convinced intelligent men. You would do well to come in with me. You really think so? I have heard you care nothing for power. If that is so, you are wrong. Perhaps. Just what is this scheme of yours, Watson? I will tell you. What is it that makes the difference between a king and a slave? Power. Why is it good to be rich? Power. There is nothing else to live for but power. Well, how do you expect to get it? For many years I've been working. You know I'm a scientist. No, are you? I have invented many useful things. This one gas I compress in small tubes. One tube is open, <laughs> one city is destroyed. And thousands of people killed. What is that to me? Human life is scum on the surface of a dirty pool. And when you've destroyed it all, what good will your power be? Perhaps. I have learned how to create life. A race of people who exist only to serve me. Me, the master. 
Now, what would you say to that? I don't know that I'd care to be one of them. You would not be. You would be a master also. I see. Just what would you want me to do? First, I want your secrets. Whatever it is you learned in India to make men believe you are a, a magician. Is that all? I want the secret of Robert Regent. You sent a man to America to steal it. And a very good job he made of it, too. What? It was not you who drug my courier in Cairo and took the drawings from him? Why don't you just have Regent make you another set of drawings? It must have been that. She, she tricked me with her talk of black magic. But you don't believe in magic. You don't seriously think she's a sorceress, do you? No, no. There is something about her. Oh, she was just trying to impress you. But uh, we were talking about Regent. I have already told you. The record of Regent's experiment is the one thing I must have to hold the world in my hands. I can have it. Well, surely he can duplicate it for you. Where is he? What was that? Wait, what's all? Wait there. I knew I'd heard the sound before. Doctor! I need a gun to spy on me. How do you dare? Doctor, I knew John do it to come here. I came to warn you. You're lying. I will be rid of both of you. You see this small tube? It's the new gas. Get away from him, Najim. No, Chandu. Do not try to take it from him. He's insane. I told you. You told him? That was a long time ago, Roxor. Najim, get out of this place. No, she will not. And you will not. I have told you too much. You idiot. You didn't tell me anything I didn't know. Hmm. I will go now by the small door. If I go out, I will throw the tube on the floor. Before either of you reach the door, you will die. <laughs> Good night, Chandu. Our drama has come to a close until tomorrow night. But there's drama and maybe magic in millions of homes where white king soap is used. Once upon a time, people thought they should buy two or three kinds of soap. One for washing machine and dishpan, maybe one or two for dainty things like lingerie and stockings. But more and more people discovered White King, the one and only one soap you ever need. No matter who you are, where you live, or what you have to wash. Your husband may be an engineer, or he may work in a bank. You may have sheets and pillowcases, no end to wash. Or you may live in a hotel with no laundering problem other than your nylons. But listen to these wonderful words. White King gets out the stubbornest dirt. White King protects, as with a caress, the daintiest fabrics. Know what you'll say? Do you? You'll say this. I love White King. Chandu, the Magician, is produced and directed by Cyril Ambrister. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu, the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.